Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to My Expanded Universe, a show where I go through the entire EU in chronological order as best I know how. Folks, we have just finished Star Wars and now we gotta go back and catch up with all the little short stories that happen in between the movie. <laughs> Hooray, right? Uh, there are a ton of short stories that you need to read and probably after reading, if you're reading through them, if you're reading through Star Wars, then you need to read these at this time. The first one you need to read is called Cantina Communications by John Chesterman. You're like, Matt, I've never heard of that. What is that? Well, it was in the Star Wars Monthly Poster, or Poster Monthly, number 16. And basically, it is a story of Luke walking in the cantina with uh, Ben and seeing some of the other aliens that we didn't get to see on camera who were also visiting Mos Eisley Spaceport Cantina at that time. Uh, it talks about, and this is one of the very first uh, expanded universe stories that we received. This is up there with Splinter of the Mind's Eye and everything. Uh, so this one came out really early after Star Wars Big Hype, and that was in this weird Star Wars poster monthly uh, issue. And that's the only one from the entire run that had a short story in it. Now, this short story infamously describes dogs you know, walking around Moss Eisley because, you know, our sci-fi wasn't that keen back then, so we had dogs. But to be honest, I, uh, Star Wars, the novel, had chickens. Obi-Wan mentions chickens in the novel. I think that was from a uh, cut line that George was going to have uh, Obi-Wan tell him. Is this story worth reading? Well, no, yes, I don't know. It's interesting because of its uniqueness for being published so early. But it's not, there's not that much content in there. And a lot of the alien races, like they're talking about sitting in, sitting in oceans and stuff, that sounds a little weird. You know, it's got kind of that, that 70s weird sci-fi vibe to it. So probably not. Is it easy to get? Yes, I think it is. I cannot remember the website, but there's a guy, I think it's StarWarsTrilogy.com or, or the original Trilogy.com or something, who will reprint old magazine articles from Star Wars. And I remember I had asked him to reprint that issue so that I could have that short story. And this was only but a couple of years ago when uh, I think Disney uh, bought the Star Wars. So I was tracking down every short story. I knew it existed, I just didn't know if I could find it or not. I mean, every blue moon maybe on eBay it'll pop up, but uh, if you can just read the story, that's really all you need, and it's not that good. But it is the next one in the list. Now, the next two stories I want to talk about are from the Star Wars Tales comp book, so read them if you want to. Uh, the first one is from Star Wars Tales number 10. It is called Trooper. Uh, basically written by Garth Ennis, and it's uh, focusing on a stormtrooper who uh, gets on Leia's ship at the very beginning of the movie, and basically describes his adventure. Now, I read somewhere that Leland Chi called this non-canon. I looked back through the story and I didn't see any contradictions in it. And I don't remember on the forums there being an argument about that being canon. Now, remember I told you when it came to Star Wars tales, if, and people remember this, if you were on the forums a lot, we hated, I don't know, I hated Star Wars Tales, and we kept having to go, is this canon? Is that canon? What's not canon? And it was, Star Wars Tales was just a big mess. It could have been something really great, but it, most of the time it was a big mess. And so they had to weed out, this is canon, this is not canon, and I, I'd read that Leland Chi called this one not canon. I just don't know why. It seems to fit in pretty fine. I, like I said, I don't think there's any contradiction here, but if there is, it's non-canon. But either way, I remember it being an okay story, not, not really that good. Uh, the next story is uh, titled Once Bitten. It's in the Star Wars uh, Tales issue number 12, written by C.B. Kabulski. And in this one, Obi-Wan is basically sitting on the Millennium Falcon. They're on their way to Alderaan and he's telling Han a story of him and his old master Qui-Gon Jinn as they uh, encounter Aura Singh. All this was meant to do was connect the prequels to the original trilogy. They said, oh, look, they told a little story. Now, I remember reading this back in the day and I got excited. I went, aha, they have finally connected the prequels to the original story. But now looking back over the story, it was very unnecessary. And why would he talk to Han? Why would he even trust Han? True, Obi-Wan probably saw the good in everyone like Qui-Gon did and maybe he just trusted him, wanted to tell him a story with a lesson. 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's an okay story, but it's not as good as I remembered it being. And of course, Star Wars Tales, you're really flipping a coin and the coin's usually popping up. Terrible story, but there you have it. Now, the last one, the last short story I want to talk about is so unique. It's so cool. It was another one that was very early Expanded Universe stuff. It, it and it didn't it came with a toy, the Imperial Troop Transport. Now, this toy came out by Kenner, but they also put a little booklet with it, kind of telling you the adventures of the Imperial Troop Transport. Ooh, I mean, how exciting can that be, right? And it kind of crams it into the story of Star Wars the movie by saying, yeah, it was there when they attacked the uh, Sandcrawler and the Stormtroopers went away. And you're thinking, wait a minute. We didn't see anything like that. Well, remember, Obi-Wan does say it was all set up to make it look like Sam people had attacked the Jawa crawler and was actually Imperials. Uh, I know in the little booklet, which does show pictures, it shows the uh, Imperial Troop Transport's guns because the, the uh, toy had guns on it, so you got to shoot the guns, right? And they shot the guns and blew up the side of the Jawa sand crawler. You're like, wait a minute. That in the movie, you don't see that hole in there. Well, it could have been on the other side of the sand crawler. We don't know. Uh, now, do you have to fit this in your canon? No, but there was a hyperspace article that referenced that booklet. Now, this is so cool because, again, this is something else that I knew nothing about until uh, Disney had bought Star Wars. And a friend of mine who collects a bunch of the toys told me he had a complete set of Kenner toys. He said, do you know, do you see this? He pulled up a booklet. I was like, what is that? And I actually found it on eBay for pretty cheap because uh, I snatched it up immediately and read it. And there's not much to the story, but the uniqueness of that story that, you know, it's, it was from a toy in its expanded universe. That's kind of neat. Now there is one glaring mistake and that's because they kind of probably rushed this out without looking over it. And someone probably watched the movie once and forgot the names. But uh, Owen, Uncle Owen is called Skywalker because they thought, oh, okay, well, Luke Skywalker, so that must be his Uncle Owen. Of course, uncles don't always share the same last names as their nephews, but they did not know that. And so Owen is referred to as Owen Skywalker once, but I believe it is by an Imperial who may not have known the name. So there you go. Now, does it have, is that canon? I don't know. It's really up for interpretation. Is it worth you tracking down and getting a copy? Probably not unless you're obsessed about the expanded universe as I am. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time with another video.